Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our latest episode of Photoshop Tips and Morning Coffee. Uh, let me get everything going here. I just want to get to where I can see you guys. Uh, let's see here. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I'm in the wrong program. That would be why I can't see any of your comments. There we go. Uh, there we go. Okay. Got to get my little comments thing open. And it uh, looks like we got a couple people. We got our first comment here from the UK. Uh, so it's probably not morning coffee time for you, but welcome anyway. Um, so if you guys have not sure what this is, this is uh, where I usually do a uh, every Tuesday morning. I've been doing at 10 a.m. Eastern time, have a little bit of morning coffee and go over some Photoshop tips with you guys. Uh, let's see here. So a couple of things in the news. Uh, if you are a Photoshop user, Photoshop was updated last week. In fact, I'm going to talk about one of the features here. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll spend the bulk of the time on one of the features here because it's it's caused quite of quite a bit of confusion and questions out there. So I wanted to handle that. And then uh, for you Lightroom users, Lightroom was updated today. So Tuesday, what is it? March 16th. Um, Tuesday, March 16th, Lightroom was updated today. Um, more of a, I would look at it as more of a maintenance type of an update. Uh, so it doesn't, there, there's actually, I don't believe there's any new features in Lightroom Classic today. Um, but what you have is just better performance. So better performance when you're scrolling, better performance in the film strip, better performance in uh, syncing photos. So if you you know take a bunch of changes from one photo and apply them to a bunch of other photos, uh, you just get increased performance in there. So and then also not for everybody, but for some people, uh, big news and, and for me, big news is and I'm never, you know, I'm one of the people that's never usually excited about this little line in every Lightroom update, which is new camera and lens support. But uh, I, I just grabbed, uh, I just picked up the Sony A1 last week. And, um, and so I'm super excited that the A1 is now supported. It was supported in Photoshop the day after I got the camera, which was like perfect timing last week, but I haven't been able to import the photos into Lightroom. I don't personally convert to DNG. Google search an article that I wrote on that. You just do Matt K and why I don't convert to DNG if you're curious why. But um, so I, have, uh, I haven't been able to use Lightroom to edit my A1 photo. So I've been using Photoshop for it, but that is in there. So anyway, a couple of updates again. Uh, the one from last week is Photoshop. The one from today, March 16th is Lightroom. Alrighty, so let's talk a little bit about lots of good mornings. Hi, everybody. Uh, feel free if you got people from all over the world, which is so cool. So I know I call it morning coffee, but there is, in fact, I would say more than more people than not are not here in the U.S. drinking coffee at this time. So uh, welcome to everybody around. Um, if you got questions, start queuing them up into uh, into the little comment section there, and, and I'll uh, I'll take a look at those. I wanted to talk about one of the Photoshop features that came out last week, which is called Enhance, and it caused quite a quite a bit of stir of confusion of what it's for, and it's just in Photoshop and all these different things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through the feature, and then we'll talk about some nuances and some things around it. So uh, let's go take a look here. I'm just gonna go open up and let me sort by, uh, let me just filter into some five-star photos here. I'm inside a bridge. So you'll notice this is a Photoshop feature. Um, I should share my screen with you. That would probably make it even better, right? So um, this is a Photoshop feature. This feature is not in Lightroom and we're gonna talk about that in a second. So if you have a question about how this works with Lightroom, et cetera, um, hold that question for just a minute. This is a Photoshop feature. And right now I am in Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is Adobe's, it's called Bridge. So think of Adobe. You've got InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, Lightroom, um, uh, what, what's it called? The PDF thing, Acrobat, uh, 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 Premiere. You've got a number of different programs across the Adobe ecosystem, okay? And Bridge, think of the name, Bridge bridging the gap between all of these programs. So Bridge was created way, way, way back, way back in the days of Photoshop CS Suite, the creative suite. Bridge was created way back then as a browser to bridge the gap between all of those programs so that you could open up, you could look at an InDesign file, not have to use your Finder window or your Windows Explorer window because you don't get much information about the InDesign file there. In Bridge, you do, okay? so. 
It gives you more information. That's why Bridge was created. They added some photography features to it, like rating and metadata and things, but that was the pre-Lightroom days. And I think Adobe, I don't know this for sure, but I would say Adobe realized this isn't the program for photographers. We're, we, we want Bridge to be all Adobe apps and photographers have a very specific needs and circumstances, which is why Lightroom was created. Some photographers love Bridge, that's fine. I'm not here to change your workflow, I'm just here to explain what this is here for. So here's how what we can do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up a photo here. Let's go, let's go open up this one. All right, so I'm gonna open up uh, a photo into, and this is a raw photo. Uh, this is taken, I just took this yesterday with the Sony A1. So I go in here and I can do, uh, it opens up into camera raw, okay? So I can go in here and I can do some quick edits and all these different things. What they did is if you right click on the photo, you can go down here to enhance. Enhance has been here for a while, okay? Enhance has been here for, uh, got for probably a couple of years now, it used to be called Enhanced Details. And the reason that it was created was for certain cameras, and this is mostly just Fuji cameras, but for certain cameras that had, have, and I don't even know the technology, demosaicing, bare path, I don't know. There's lots of techie reasons behind it, but certain cameras, raw files, have these artifacts that are being left in them that many raw editors out there don't do well with. So Adobe came up with this enhanced details that's supposed to, supposed to read those better and help it. This was a feature that was literally not out there for 99.9% .9 of your photos, okay? This was, mo most people should never have even used this feature. What they did is they added this super resolution feature in last week and you say doubles image resolution ideal for large displays and prints. So that's your first cue there, right? Large displays and large prints. So if you don't have a large display, and by large display, I mean like 8K, right? 4K is not large. Most, just about all of your cameras are photographing in 4K, which is 4,000 pixels, okay? Most of you have an image that is 4,000 pixels wide. Making it any bigger is not gonna make it any better for a display. Most of you don't have 8K displays. So, so display or large print. And again, most of you aren't printing large print. By large print, we're talking 72, 17 by 22 and above, all right? Mostly 20 by 30, 30 by 40 type things. But anyway, so you got this super resolution feature and it even gives you estimated completion time, 25 seconds. So I'm gonna click enhance because we're gonna have to wait 25 seconds for this to, uh, for this to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. But what it's doing is, is it's going in there and it's somehow increasing the resolution of the photo. Um, and I'm gonna talk about you know, the way that we, we really used to do that was from Photoshop image, image size. Um, yes, there are plugins out there. You know, people have various degrees of success with them. Some people, Topaz Gigapixel is a popular one. Some people love it. Um, some people are able to get what they want straight out of photo. I was always able to get straight what I want straight out of Photoshop. But again, some people like the Topaz Gigapixel as well. So what happens is that now you're going to see, I'm going to open up the little film strip down here. I mean, you're only going to see this if you opened up a raw photo in, into, or, or if you came in here from uh, Bridge. But you'll see down here in the film strip, there are two images. Okay. So the first image is the original raw file. The second image is the enhanced version of this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select both of them and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna open them into Photoshop. While they're opening in there, I'm gonna hop back over to Bridge because I'm gonna give you a couple little tips on this, which is in Bridge, you can do this. If you double click a raw file, it's going to open up a, it's gonna open up a, um, it's gonna open up into Camera Raw, a raw or a DNG. If you were to go to this and do a JPEG file, you would have to go to File, Open in Camera Raw, and you can force it to open in Camera Raw. What I'm showing you won't work from the filter menu in Photoshop. If you go Filter, Camera Raw, Filter, all of this stuff that you see here won't work. The film strip won't be there, the enhance won't be there, none of that stuff will work the same. Okay, so keep that in mind. You have to be coming from Bridge. If you open up just a raw file, yeah, that'll work fine. But if you wanna do it on a JPEG, you gotta come in here through Bridge and go File, Open in Camera Raw. Okay. All right. So let's go jump over into Photoshop and we can uh, take a look at our, our differences here. So here's the enhanced version. And if I go to image, image size, 
you will see it is now 17,280 pixels wide, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to this version here, and if I go to image size, you'll see it is half that. So I'm just gonna, here's a tip for you. I'm just gonna go times two, okay? Times two is, if you do the math, 8640 times two, 17,280, okay? So that is exactly the size of this. It doubles the size, the, the width and the height of the photo here. So uh, you can do math directly in these little fields here. You can do dividing plus whatever you wanna do directly in the fields there. So there's a little side tip for you, but I'm gonna click okay and we're gonna let that go ahead and upsize itself uh, the old way, the way that I used to, to do this. And so once it's done, we're gonna overlay them and just take a look at the differences here. And you can make a choice for yourself. So I'm not saying that this feature is amazing or not amazing. I'm just here to say that it's here. I do actually think if you need to double the size of your photo, it's actually not a bad way to go. All right, so let's take this and drop it over into our other one. The bottom one, I'm gonna call this enhance. Top one, I'm gonna call this image size. The two methods that we used. Command or control plus to zoom in. And let's take a look. Let's pixel peep. This is 100% view. So this is the image size version. This is the enhanced version. Again, the image size version. And then this is the enhanced version. So guys, virtually almost no difference. Again, this is the enhanced version. This is the image size version. Enhanced version looks like a little bit less noise, not much, but a little bit, but to me actually a little bit softer. And the enhanced version, eh, a little bit more noise. Now, here's what's interesting. Let me see if I can go find the file because I did this on a couple of other photos. Um, and I wanna show you those, those photos here because we can go take a look and, and compare them because I, I tried it on a few other ones as well. So let me go and where'd they go? They're from last week. All right, here we go. So Super Res 1 and 2. So let's open up these files. Again, these are big, big files, so it's gonna take a second here. But I wanna compare them because I actually could see a bit of a difference in some other images, which is gonna tell you that this is not an either or type of a thing. This is a, you know, take a look at what it does. So here is the same thing done on a landscape photo, okay? So there's some rocks in the foreground. This is the enhanced super zoom version that I did in Camera Raw. This is the image size version. So we'll go in one level deeper to 200%. You can really see the difference here. This is image size. This is the new way super zoom. So that one actually looks a little bit sharper, just more contrast really, but it does tend to look a little bit sharper. And as I look at any noise or artifacting from it, we can really pixel peep into an area like this. It's actually just a hair cleaner, all right? The image size way leaves you with a little bit noise. Neither one of them are bad in both of them. Remember, this is meant for a big print. And remember, if you were printing, your noise tends to go away anyway. So those of you that print don't tend to worry as much about noise um, because you understand that that noise won't really be seen. So. So you can see it there. And then here's another version on another wildlife photo. So again, let's go zoom into the key part here. Again, I'm pixel peeping at 200% because it's easier to show you in video. Video would, would hide a lot of this, but um, so here is the new way, new way super resolution. Here is the old way using image image size. Super resolution, new way, old way using image size, okay? So to me, the new way wins out of this one, okay? Definitely less artifacting um, and noise-ishness going on in the background there. So there's a, a couple of examples for you guys. Um, again, I don't really necessarily wanna make a decision on it. Uh, it it's not a feature that, that I'm gonna use a whole lot, mainly because it's, I, you know, most of our cameras today are shooting plenty big. So this is a photo that you would have to do a heavy crop on that you might wanna use it or an old photo from maybe a 12 megapixel camera from years ago that you decided to, uh, that you decided you wanted to put, um, you want, decided you want to make a bigger print or share in a, in a larger size of it.
okay? Um, so that's a, a couple of options for you. Now I do want to show you, because here's what I did. A lot of people are thinking, well, hey, let's go take a look at, at this raw file. Because a lot of people think like, hey, I can take, look, I want you to see, I want you to see the, the crop on this photo, all right? Look how small the eagles are in relation to everything in the photo. So if I wanted to, it looks cool, right? Uh, it was, a, you know, they were way distance, way far away, um, but some good action of them battling in the air here. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I crop in. And when I crop in, you quickly realize I'm, I'm not really sharing this photo. I think it's cool. And that's part of what, what I love about wildlife photography is I get to see things and moments in nature that I really, I wouldn't get to see any other way. Um, but I, I'm probably not going to share this photo because it's, it's just not good quality and nothing I can do is really going to make it good quality because it's just so low in resolution. So I went ahead and I did exactly what I did before. I went in and I did the enhanced version of it and I made it bigger. Okay. So we can actually look at, I think I have them open here. So we can actually look at these and I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in because I want to, essentially what I want to show you is, is I don't think this is the tool for you. If you're thinking, Hey, I'm going to crop the crap out of my photo and I'm going to be able to share it and do really great things with it. I, I don't think this is the tool for you. If that's what you're looking for. I don't think at the end of the day, I don't think you can ever get away from good photography. You just can't get away from it. You can't get away from good camera technique. You can't get away from good light. You can't get away from good exposure and you can't get away from having the lens and the gear to get close to something. You, you can't ever get away from that, but let's take a look. So this is version one. Let's see if we can get that close. This is version two. And let's close that one up here so I can just flip back and forth. So again, this is version one. This is version two. Version one, two. So, I mean, guys, to me, they're almost identical. And in video, in the way video gets talked about, I don't, I don't know that you can even probably see the difference. All right. Again, version one, version two, one, two. I mean, I'm having a hard time figuring out which one is which. I'm going to say that this one. Gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm going to say that this one is the enhanced new version and the other one is not. Yeah. So that was it. So this one is the enhanced new version. And this one is the old way. And there's just virtually no difference in there. And what it comes down to is it, it wasn't a good photo to begin with. I, I did not have a good photo going in. I had a really cool moment. I had a fun moment for me as a photographer to enjoy on the computer and look and see some of these battles that um, were, are usually so off in the distance that we don't, we don't get to, to see them. But it's, uh, it's, you know, again, I can't get away from good photography. This was not good photography. I did not have the lens and the zoom that I needed, or was I in the position to take a compelling picture of this, but still fun to look at. Just don't set your expectations for this feature. I guess that's the main thing that I was, uh, I was trying to go across here. All right. So questions that come up from this are, so how can I, how can I, let's go switch back here. So questions that, that come up from this are, how can I, how can I use this as a Lightroom user? So here's the deal, guys. This feature isn't in Lightroom yet. All right. Um, Lightroom and Camera Raw are, are basically the same thing. Okay. If you move the exposure to plus one in Camera Raw and you move the exposure to plus one in Lightroom, they are identical. They are not two different programs when it comes to that stuff. They're the same thing. And they usually stay on par with each other. That said, um, there's an update to Lightroom today. I got to say, I'm a little disappointed that Enhanced isn't updated in there yet because it's usually they stay on par with each other. Usually sometimes the same day the updates come out. So um, Adobe has usually kept that true. I don't know why they, they did that in this one. I don't know why that feature is being held. I have to assume it's coming to Lightroom Classic um, sometime soon. I just don't know when, but it's, uh, I, again, they're usually the same, but you can't Lightroom and Camera Raw and Bridge don't integrate together. So don't think you're going to have a cohesive workflow 
All right, you can you can kludge together whatever you want, but don't think you're going to have a, a, a cohesive workflow to 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 edit in Lightroom and then do this in Camera Raw and then get back the photo in Lightroom and all that stuff. Again, you can fake it, and I know somebody's going to post a comment where they say, "Oh, I can do," and they're going to list ten steps of how they get there. Again, don't look for a good workflow. Not saying you can't go into Lightroom, hit Command S. Uh, for save and that'll force save your changes to your your file to to your raw file and then you can right click show that file in your finder explorer window open it into camera raw and you can edit that photo that way if you needed to do it but again from i, I just don't think that feature is going to be used as much as people think okay um for a heavy crop you saw what it would do and it's really meant for a big print somebody had asked what do i mean by a big print talking 20 by 30, you know, 20 by 30 and up. Uh, I don't really consider 17 by 22 a very big print. So uh, if you were to do the math, you know, if you wanted to print, I, I usually printed about 200 pixels per inch. So if we wanted to do, if we wanted to do a 20 uh, inch print, you that would give you 4,000 pixels. So you would need 4,000 pixels on the wide side to do a 20 inch print. Most of you have a 4,000 pixel photo. So um, the need to, to print anything bigger, I think, gets prohibitively expensive on there. OK, uh, let's see here. Let's go take a couple of look at some of the questions inside of here. Uh, how does it compare with Topaz Gigapixel? I have no idea. Um, I used Topaz Gigapixel. I didn't see. I saw a difference. I saw if I were to compare the two, A versus B, A and Topaz Gigapixel, B versus Photoshop, I could see a difference. The difference for me and for my prints was not compelling enough to force me to go through the trouble of going to a different program. So yeah, A and B, you, when you do pixel peeping comparisons, you will generally always see a difference in everything. It's how realistic is that difference? Is that difference at 400% when you're comparing on your screen or is that difference come out in the print? The difference never came out in the print to me, so it's never a way that I went and I haven't compared it to, to this yet. Don said, how would you rate uh, how would you rate the new, the raw conversion in on one? Um, good, you know, I, I'm a Lightroom Photoshop user. Um, uh, if I were to rate the the products, I'd say Adobe Capture One at the top of raw conversions. I'd put on one um, down, you know, right down below there. But again, I'm a, I'm a Lightroom Photoshop user, so I do all my raw conversions in here. Um, I use the programs that, that work for me. So, um, and, and on one does have upsides again, Will you see a difference? Yeah, uh, it, it's just not a difference I ever saw in, in come across in the print. All right, let's see. Taking a look at some of the other questions inside here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I know I saw one in there. All right, so somebody said large print. What are you talking about? What size are you talking about? Uh, I did see a question in here about something that could do best way to separate a background and foreground when the subject blends into the background um and then the, at the end of the eric says in a black and white photo so black and white versus color you know not too different in there but best way to separate a subject from its background for you so i opened up this photo uh, i'm gonna cut i'll cut that part out of the original file here and maybe here i'll go ahead and i'll make it all darker Okay, and then I'll click open. I need to have like a big, I need to have like a big light in front of me that you guys can click on your side and you can like give me the big eh. All right, so what I would do is select subject. All right, and that's gonna put a selection around. It's never gonna, generally never gonna put a perfect selection around it, but it'll put a selection around it, okay? Then I go to my adjustments panel I'll go to something like curves or brightness contrast. They'll both work. There's no right way to do it. And make it a little bit brighter. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to go click on that layer mask. I'm going to press B for my brush tool. And I took my flow down 30, 40% or so. Okay. With kind of like a lower opacity. And then what I do is with a very soft edge brush, meaning the hardness is set to 0%. With a very soft edge brush, uh, somebody just asked, am I using a mouse? I'm using a trackpad. With a very soft edge brush, I'll paint along the edge. And when I get to some harsh edges like here, 
see where the brush is, edge of the brush. I don't let the whole brush go over the subject. I just let the edge of the brush, that feathered area, do the work for me. And that should give you a nice blend between using a low flow, between using a very feathered brush, uh, that should give you, that should allow you to blend things in and with their background. Okay, so I know somebody, whoever asked the question mentioned black and white, doesn't really change the process for black and white. Um, nothing would really change about that except your photo would be black and white instead. Okay, so something along those lines there. Again, keys to that, feathered brush, low opacity, and working the edge of the brush. Again, you're not seeing me, you're not seeing me take the middle of the brush over anything. I'm always working the edge of the brush, that feathered part of it, and that's how you get nice, smooth results without having to make uh, perfect selections for everything. Okay, all right, let's see here. Uh, just a whole bunch of your screen out there. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I know, I know. Uh, Andy said, and let's see if we can put Andy. So Andy said, acrylic or metal prints? Which do you prefer? Um, I, I like metal prints. I think metal prints are, are beautiful. Uh, very, very like, you know, they're some of the hardest to print because uh, they, you know, just every little detail is, is visible in a metal print, but I, I like, I love metal prints. Not metallic, that's a key, okay? Not metallic, I don't like that, that metallic-y brushed metal sheen to a photo. I like a good glossy metal print, okay? And there's a difference there. Metallic and metal are two very, very different types of prints, so don't get caught ordering a metallic print thinking you're getting metal. So metal, aluminum, typically the, uh, typically the same thing in there. Uh, let's see here. All right, looks like we got all the questions in there. Uh, all right, so guys, let me go switch back over to you guys. So uh, if you enjoyed this, please do me a big favor, share it with whoever you share things with. If you got a photography group or anything like that, I would greatly uh, appreciate you sharing this, just helping me get the word out. It's fun. Uh, it's fun to have you know bigger groups of people in here when we do these things. And, um, and that's the way to get the word out. There's only very few people online right now, but uh, you can help me grow it by, uh, you know, if you're a member of a photo photography group or something like that, uh, just go ahead and share it. Uh, also, if you wanna see any of the live events I do, just head over to the website, mattk.com, and there's a little events link up there in the in the top. Uh, you can uh, you can swing by those at, what time is it? It's like 10.30, so at 11 o'clock, I have a premiere coming out with the bird eye autofocus, my first thoughts on the bird eye autofocus of the new Sony Alpha One. And it's actually got video that I took through the camera. So it's not just me talking about it, you will actually see what the camera's doing um, in there, which is pretty cool to see. It's pretty cool to see how that autofocus is working and how it's you know catching onto the bird's eye there. So that's at 11 a.m. Eastern time right here on YouTube. So you can just come to my channel and the, the video premieres there and then it'll just live on the channel afterwards if you, uh, if you wanna find out or if you wanna watch it, if you can't make it here at 11. <laughs> Somebody said, can I have your brain for Photoshop and Lightroom? Take it take it. There's not much of it left these days. So feel free to take what's left of it. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have a, uh, have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you again soon.